Social Media Saturday, back with another episode. Today, I'm joined by Madison Long, who is CEO of Clutch, a content creator marketplace that equips busy marketing teams with the tools and resources to scale social video. So Madison, thanks so much for coming to chat with me today. Thanks for having me. I'm excited. Yeah, let's just jump right in. I'm so curious about Clutch and your work with it. Tell me all about it and how is it different from other creator tools? Totally. I think what's really unique about Clutch is that we are built for creators. So part of that is making sure that creators who might be micro influencers in their own right, but typically are just folks who are really great at making UGC styled content can get long term contracts with some top brands. And why this is important is oftentimes creators aren't going to become influencers. They're not going to be able to independently, you know, become rich overnight by their own content. But as a marketing skill, it is still a very necessary skill that most brands and companies have a hard time leveraging internally. And so they basically need to have in-house content creation teams to keep up with the volume and the velocity of content that's required to stay competitive nowadays, but they can't run those hiring processes every single time they need new content. And so with Clutch, we help you find those content creators that can operate like a, an extension of your team without the added workflow issues, hiring issues, uh, trying to understand negotiations that often is required when you're just trying to independently find someone or when you're trying to sift through the thousands of people on places like Fiverr. And so for both the creators and the actual companies that we work with, we simplify that process so both can be successful and win. Okay. All right. So I'm seeing the difference now between clutch and like an agency, for example, that would work specifically with influencers who have 10,000, 50,000 mm -hmm. followers and are just connecting them for a campaign. So with clutch, right. is it, let me see if I'm understanding it correctly. Say I'm a a social media manager at a um, big company, I'm internal and we have five channels and I'm managing all the content for all of it and maybe I can't keep up with it. And so we would work with Clutch to connect us with creators who could help kind of carry some of that load. Is that right? Absolutely. And I think that's a great example. A social media manager at a big company nowadays, those companies have not scaled the headcount for social media teams the same way that the actual platforms have scaled. You now have more platforms than ever to post on social. They all require different types of engagement and hooks and, and, and all those different things. And then also social video is essentially king at this point. And if you have this new form factor of video that requires hours of filming, editing, et cetera, that is hard for one social media manager to do. It's very different Absolutely. than having static content that you could post on Facebook and Twitter at the same time, like you could even just a few years ago. Yes. And I'm sure a lot of social media managers can um, resonate with that feeling of being really overloaded and um, having, yeah, just a lot of content to create on your shoulders. And the thing about it is that the content machine never stops. The content monster right. of these social media platforms is never satisfied, is never full. So um, yeah, I wish that I had had clutch when I was in my last full-time role at ASU. I was managing three different brands, um, channels for wow. each of them. And um, yeah, it's it gets to the point where you feel like you want almost even just another person that you can bounce ideas off of. So how do right. how how tell me a little bit more about um, like the detail, how do you work specifically or how do the creators work specifically with these teams? Totally. So what's great about our platform is all of the, let's say, um, the scary management stuff is handled with the platform. And so we kind of call it like a creator project management tool. So approving assets, revisions, briefs, that's all built within the platform payment, et cetera. And so that really uh, what we famously say is we let creators create. And so mm -hmm. there's more time for you to meet with that creator and go over strategy, riff on ideas, think about different hooks you want to test, build that content um, calendar out, and then let them know which pieces that they might tackle versus which pieces you might, or however that works for your team. We don't 
want Clutch to be like an agency where we say, oh, we're setting your entire strategy. We don't do any of that. We say, you are the leader, you are the expert in your brand, your company, et cetera. Here's people that can learn really quickly. We, we vet them to be sure that they're really responsive, really professional, and can execute your vision uh, flawlessly and also provide their own input as, you know, the as the niche creator that they are. Mm -hmm. And so like yeah. you're saying, one of our clients is Hearst Magazines. They have a ton of magazines, Women's Health, Oprah Daily, Men's Health, et cetera, et cetera. And so their magazine for Prevention Mag, they needed creators 55 plus because that magazine is for folks that are more near retirement age. Got you. In that case, you want to hear from creators that are also part of that age what actually might resonate. And so that doesn't need to have the rigidity of you as a social media manager coming up with every script, but really giving overall essence and letting that creator create. Yeah, what I love about that is then you can diversify the types of content that you're creating and totally. the audience that you're reaching or speaking to. That's another challenge that I encountered as a social media manager was just I felt like I couldn't always speak to the audience that I wanted to and right. would love to, in this case, I was working at a university, have had mm -hmm. the chance to work more with students to create yeah. content um, yeah. that would speak to other other um, people their age. So, and a, a great concept. I'm, I, I love it. And I am, it's like really solving um a big problem in the market and looking at your LinkedIn, you have such a unique mix of finance and diversity, equity, inclusion experience. And how did all these experiences come together to, to come to this idea of clutch? Totally. Um, so my background in finance, I was working at Microsoft in sort of a rotational program, but all within the finance part of the different business units. And I knew I wanted to start my career in accounting or finance because my uh, aversion to numbers, let's say, was pretty high. And mm -hmm. I knew long term I wanted to be an entrepreneur. And so it wasn't so much that I um, was so passionate about finance as much as I was like, this is one of my weaker areas. I need to not be afraid of numbers and money if I'm going to eventually run a business. While wow, at my house, you just dove right in. <laughs> yes, yes, to a degree, because I knew what came naturally to me, which was yeah. more marketing, uh, sales. Yeah. Mm -hmm. leadership even right but but i i think i've seen and my dad's an entrepreneur right and i've seen where when you are building a business you of course want to hire people with complementary skills as well as yeah. like totally opposite skills but you also don't want your accountant to send you over a balance sheet and you have no idea what's going on in there or or i mean and this sounds crazy but even rihanna right she her her dad had robbed her and stolen money. Or you hear all the time about business right. managers. And not that I'm paranoid, but I just knew being afraid of it would mean I'm avoiding it. And avoiding okay. it is bad business practice. And so that was the initial kind of onset for that because I always really cared about youth, youth advocacy, diversity, inclusion, um, you know, all of these different uh, uh, qualities that make, you know, make me wake up every morning. And I wanted to be able to have some sort of business that could address some of these. And what we're doing with Clutch, which started with specifically how we can empower the next generation of freelancers, which I still believe it's just next generation isn't necessarily an age group. It's mm -hmm. what does freelancing look like in a post COVID remote first workplace? How right. can we make it so that people are set up more for success? And when you're freelancing, you're doing everything. You're your own accountant. You're your own um, uh, marketer, you're your own, all these different qualities, you're your own lawyer. Exactly. And so what if we can take away the tax, accounting, legal, negotiations, marketing even, and just put you in front of aligned brands or mm -hmm. give these creators their portfolio, which is like a public link and be able to use that and pitch yourself to brands with this link that shows you're vetted. They can book you with one click. They can, you know, go through all these things without having to negotiate. It really forth. simplifies all that you're having to keep track of. Totally. And so where that kind of loops into my D&I work is, uh, D-E-N-I, is 
oftentimes people of color, women, they are going to be more taken advantage of in any sort of workplace environment. When you don't have to uh, feel like you're going into a really tricky negotiation situation or you're making content in exchange for a product versus actual money, taking away those things that oftentimes put folks at a disadvantage really evens the playing field to make sure that people are getting paid and compensated fairly for the work they're doing. Yeah. And so there's different ways that the different learnings from all of my, you know, past experience all feeds into how I want to show up and um, provide real value to our creators. Okay. I can see how they, these different experiences and interests come, came together for this, but I, I mean, I'm so impressed that you um, took with, what you call what um, one of my mentors calls your weak bits, like the parts of ourselves that we're not so strong at, and that you just yeah. dove into it. I think that that's really uh, admirable and and good business practice, and good for people who have their own businesses or even just people in their um, in full time roles. To a good reminder that there is a lot of value in turning towards um, the things we would rather not work on. Um, yeah. Thank so you. In, yeah, and I mean that's so that's one gem to to take away from this. But I'm sure that there are other people who are looking at you and are um, wondering how you took your idea and you made it a reality. So, mm -hmm. do you have any advice from lessons learned along the way uh, to those who want to start their own startup in the social media or creator space? Totally. Um, I'd say the first thing is it's okay to be a little bit naive and a, and a lot of bit delusional when you're getting started. I think that oftentimes people want to ask you when you say, oh, I have this really great idea and I think I want to go all in on it. People ask you, well, what's the plan? What if it doesn't work out? What if, you know, do you know how to do this yet? Do you know? And, and to all of that, people are not just doing that because they're haters. Genuinely, people are concerned. People have their own trepidations. People have their own projections of, well, I wouldn't start a business unless I had 90% of these things figured out. Yeah. That doesn't have to be your story. And so, not internalizing other people's fears is the kind of the first thing. Finding other people who are taking really courageous steps as well and, and, and being in community with them because the discouragement, and like we were talking about before we started recording, you know, there are really bad days yep. and you have to internalize, I mean, not internalize those bad days just as much as you don't really internalize the good days. You just need to know there are days that happen. Some are up, some are down, but I am steadfast in the direction that I'm going. And I feel really passionate about why I'm doing this. And I want to see it through and find validation along the way. I also don't believe in just doing things and just being headstrong when things aren't working. And so that's another really good lesson I learned. We pivoted multiple times. Our team has gone through three pivots since beginning Clutch, which we began right before COVID. And so naturally some things had to change. It wasn't always even a creator marketplace. It was more focused on side hustles. And so that evolution was listening to our customers, being open to feedback and being open to change. I think I, I love analogies. And so let me know if this is going too far off the rails, no, but all the analogies. <laughs> But this weekend, I'm in, I'm in California. This weekend, I was um, hiking in like one of the redwood forests. And what's so interesting about redwoods is you see a lot of them break off or burn down and still regenerate and grow. And they do that by having more of like a system of other trees around them that can feed them and nourish them in those, let's say, darker times. But also when you think about a tree, the healthiest trees are constantly being uh, shaken and moved by wind and thrust around, right? These trees, the healthiest tree is not within a snow globe of, of no environmental pressure. The ones that grow the tallest have a lot of friction along the way and become stronger because of it. And so know that also those bad days and those hard times and those pivots do end up creating more strength and the people that you're surrounding yourself with are there to help keep you up, standing up when it seems like you can't really see what's next. Mm -hmm. And so I just, I mean, it's, it's not, you know, just a me thing getting to this place. It's a whole team. It's advisors and mentors, it's investors and family. 
and friends who have helped me kind of stay firm on this path. Yep. I love that analogy. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Be with your community, get stronger through the difficult times. And uh, to go back to your first point, Delulu is the Salulu, as the youngins are saying these days. (laughs) Yes. I (laughs) often think that um, I started a business right out of college. And I'm thinking now, you know, as I'm almost 30, I feel like I wouldn't have, I don't know that I would do that now, you know? Then I was just so naive and I had no idea all the challenges that I was going to encounter and how really unrealistic it was. Um, But yeah, sometimes you just got to go for it and figure it out along the way. Seriously. Yeah. I mean, I definitely think back, I started it. The initial idea was like 23, going on Mm -hmm. 24, so very soon after graduating undergrad. Um, I also... If I knew it was going to be COVID and all this other stuff, I would have made a lot of different choices. Mm -hmm. But it's like, if I didn't know. Yeah. And if it wasn't for that delusion, like I wouldn't be in a place now where I'm like, I'm not afraid to start another business in the future because I will save a lot of time. Mm -hmm. Um, But it is kind of like a, like a scratch. You got an itch of entrepreneurship in so many different ways. Even if I have a corporate job, there's probably always going to be something that it's a little bit entrepreneurial about what I'm doing. Right. You'll probably always have some sort of side project or something Mm -hmm. that you're working on. Yeah. Sometimes you just have that entrepreneurial bug. and For uh, sure. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Madison. I really appreciate you taking the time to to chat with us today. For anybody watching, if you are a creator and you want to work with Clutch, if you are a business and you want to work with Clutch, please um, check out the full interview below. There are links in there. You'll find the website and you can also contact Madison via LinkedIn or email. So thanks so much. Thank you. Yes, we're that'sclutch.com.